live in a world that is truly characterized by selfishness. If we were to go out on the street in Danville, Illinois, and poll people, or in Westville, Illinois, or Bismarck, or Oakland, or Cayuga, or Crawfordsville, or wherever, uh, wherever we would go, we poll people just off the street, not church folks, because I think this congregation especially knows the answer to this. But if we poll most people, we say, are men and women inherently good or evil? Do you know the answer we're going to get from the world? That they're good. After all, if you look deep enough in, this, in every person, there's a little bit of good. But listen, I've met a lot of people, and that's not always true. And, and, and even with good church folk like us, you followers of Jesus Christ, we have to understand that we are inherently evil. If we weren't, we have no need of a Savior. And, and, and even little children, I'm waiting, we're waiting for Roger to go through this. Even little children come to a point where they understand what mine is. It's mine. But part of repentance is letting go of what we want. It's letting go of the way of the world. It's letting go specifically of our sinful nature. Turn over to Galatians chapter 5. When you find Galatians 5, hang on to it. We're going to look at a couple verses that are going to come back there in a little bit. But hang on to uh, Galatians 5. We're going to look at verses 19 through 21. Um, what's the sinful nature of people? Yes. Well, fortunately, Paul gives us, gives us a couple places where he lists these things. And so here's the acts of the sinful nature. He says that the acts of the sinful nature are not with sexual immorality, impurity, Debauchery is just another word for foolishness. Let me ask you something. The United States of America, the country that we live in, do you think that's a good description of sexual immorality, impurity, foolishness, all sorts of foolishness? Yes. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before. That those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. They won't. And why is it that there are so many people in this culture who have this idea that they're going to be secure? They're going to live the way that they want to live. Paul says it can't happen. Ephesians 5 5. This one, for of this you can be sure an immoral, impure, greedy person, such a man as an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Impurity, greed, immorality, they have no place. You want another list? First Corinthians 6. Let's turn over to First Corinthians 6. Again, keeping your thumb there in Galatians. Corinthians chapter 6, I'm going to turn off all the pages. Maybe you don't have all your pages. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor mutual prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, nor the parents of the kingdom of God. I'm going to say verse 11 for just a second. Um, but, but, but please, please see there. Do, do, do you know what? Do you know what one of the, the biggest conflicts and obstacles that we are going to face in the next five years? You know what it is? We have a government that is going to be forced upon us all the time. Understand this when it comes down to alternate lifestyles, um, homosexual, you know, relationships, whatever. That's 
sin, and this is what we've got to come to understand as a church, that sin is no different than any other sin. So please hear me say, it is no different than any other sin, but I am going to, I am going to challenge, and I am going to rebuke liars. I am going to challenge, and I am going to rebuke gossips. I am going to challenge and I am going to rebuke slanderers. I am going to challenge and I am going to rebuke adulterers. I am going to challenge and I am going to rebuke swindlers. And I am going to challenge and I am going to rebuke homosexuals. This is awesome. And we are told to depart from that person, to turn away from what we were. How do I know that? Read verse 11. Such were some. As a church, we've got to stop. We've got to stop treating homosexuals. And even if they are not even ashamed of the divorce, whatever, we have got to stop treating it like it's a sin. We have to part with the sin. Because it's not right. But at the same time, Can't be done. 
we just don't have that in us. The full life. But God, through Jesus, has made justification possible. He sets us right. God provides the penalty to him to the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. And then he allows us to walk with him through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's just fun. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, you know, all joking is how well do you do with that? How well do you do with keeping in step with the Spirit? I want you all to be struggling. Be struggling. Because there's some things that the Holy Spirit can speak to that are just difficult to do. Now, that in itself should tell you that this is a it's a really struggle for us to give ourselves over to God. Why? Because we live here. We live here on this earth. Walking in step with the Spirit is difficult. Because we have a very real enemy. And I know there's some people that don't believe that we have an enemy. But we have a very real enemy. First, uh, Peter writes and says that uh, he is he is our adversary. He is roaming. He's prowling the earth seeking those who Since we live here, Peter also said that we're aliens and strangers here. Since we live here on this earth, it's hard to walk in the spirit. Not impossible, it's hard. Several years ago, C.S. Lewis wrote uh, a book called The Screwtape Letters. Um, Screwtape was an assistant that writing to his nephew. And Screwtape was telling his nephew how to make uh, Christians leave. 